welcome to the next episode. So today we're actually going to answer one of the questions maybe on your mind of, again, how to sort of decide on which blockchain is the best. And again, this isn't going to be a political course where we decide on uh, which is the perfect blockchain. But I think, and you know, this is sort of a niche topic, but I want to talk about it. It's this idea called the blockchain trilemma. And it's really, again, how we sort of got into this place of having all these multiple blockchains and the benefits of them. And also a way you can kind of decide for yourself of you know, which network or which blockchain you would like to use in the future. So the blockchain trilemma uh, is actually a concept originated by Vitalik, again, the founder of Ethereum. And it was to sort of address the search for the blo perfect blockchain, whether it exists and what it would look like. And there's three concepts, naturally, in a trilemma. Uh, and it's the scalability of the network, the decentralization of the network, and security of the network. These are all very important when you're designing a blockchain, and they all have sort of ways you can balance these to make decisions technically on how you want your network to grow and function. So let's look at scalability first. And what do we mean by scalability? And what's why it's important for blockchains? Well, networks grow over time. More people start participating in the network, uh, transactions are made, and that increases the traffic of the, what the network actually can handle. So again, you know, data gets in there, we're adding more blocks, the blocks are getting more and more full. So it's super important now, how do we handle the increase? And oftentimes it leads to an increase of fees uh, to transact because each sort of uh, computation within them has some sort of transaction fee. And in order to scale or allow the transactions to not just overflow in the network, you need to have some sort of barrier and that's sometimes financial. So there's an increase of fees and it becomes then harder to transact or at least more expensive to transact. So you have less growth over time uh, because you know, more and more people aren't able to transact on the, on the network because it's so high or they have to be strategic on when they transact and there's so many different you can see in Ethereum, for example, there's so many different gas monitors out there to know exactly when high fees are and when low fees are. And, you know, people are going to the extremes of waking up at 4 a.m. or something to uh, do transactions. So it's ultimately not the best or for the health of the growth of uh, the network in, 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 as a whole. And the idea then as far as balance is, you know, how much security do we sacrifice? We sure that we could add more trans, uh, transactions into a block, but then we will lose out or maybe validating them or using the resources needed to validate them. Uh, so we're trying to make this balance so that the network is both scalable and secure. And also it begs the question of, you know, should we actually also completely uh, remove some of the decentralized nature of the, of the network? Uh, so, you know, arguably, as we kind of pointed out in the earlier, uh, what is Web3 slide, uh, centralized, centralized networks are faster. Uh, and, you know, we can do sort of a hybrid approach, which uh, one of the critiques or um, points of, let's say, a Solana is that it's a very managed blockchain. So, again, that's why it gives some of the, the speed uh, that it has. So, do we outweigh those benefits of being a decentralized network to add more centralized resources to handle the traffic? That again is the question around the blockchain trilemma, tri tri specifically on scalability. And around decentralization. So again, in the idea is that there's no central en entity in control. There's no way that one entity can sort of pull the network down or make decisions based on consensus uh, on, on having some ultimate power. So all nodes are essentially should be equal. And if you have more nodes in the network, there's actually more security. So if there are more participants, it's less likely for a node to come in and uh, basically dominate or direct or control uh, the network by having more coins or stakes uh, within the network. So again, more nodes adds less to scalability. So it really is how do you actually keep uh, these transaction times short while keeping consensus uh, in place and having that in a decentralized fashion. And how do you prevent the network from going in the wrong direction? So in the idea of governance, where you know there's again not a central authority to decide on what improvements or changes to the network, how do you make sure that 
you know, one that the network or the participants are voting in favor of the network? And also, how do you prevent someone, some bad actors from controlling those consensus or governance models? Something to consider, definitely. On the security side of things, so most blockchains operate with transparent code, uh, whether that's they exist on the network or they're open source projects. This allows hackers or attackers to look at the code, understand exactly how it functions, so it opens it up to attacks on those applications and contracts. The networks themselves should have security in numbers. So there's this concept of 51% attack, which for a network of the size of Ethereum is nearly impossible, where you would have 51% of the nodes uh, are basically controlled by a bad actor that could control the consensus model. But maybe for smaller networks, this isn't impossible. And we actually had historical examples where uh, bad actors or people not, with not an interest in mind take over the network or the 51% and allow them to have complete control of the direction of the network as well as consensus and their improving faulty or fraudulent transactions. But those is, how do you grow the number of nodes without slowing the network? Again, since in most blockchains, the nodes need to be replicated as far as the data, and that takes time to pass along. But you want to have security. Again, more nodes equals a more secure network. How do you keep adding those nodes without slowing the network down? And that's a really way to sort of balance that as a blockchain designer. So that, ends, that leads us to the question, does the perfect blockchain exist? Well, to point specifically to Ethereum, since Vitalik is the one that has posited this question, we can look at different solutions uh, where we can make the network at least more better, maybe not perfect. One of those is sharding and rollups. Basically, this is breaking transactions into smaller parts or treating them as sort of one group. Uh, and then we don't necessarily have to have the main blockchain or the layer one blockchain, if you will, uh, being able to transact. We can kind of cons uh, reconcile or work with the transactions in smaller parts and then bring them up or roll them up as the name is implying to the main chain. We also have things like state channels. Basically, if I'm interacting with one account frequently, I can have an open network or open channel between that account and we are transactioning here and there. Maybe it's taking multiple transactions from my account or sending it to them. And then after uh, a, a time has passed, I can essentially say, okay, we have settled and I give the settlement to the main chain. So that's important in the ledger, but all of those small transactions are basically treated as one transaction. We also have things like parachains. So these actually connect multiple blockchains to a backbone or a main blockchain. So again, all of the transactions, the parachains or the multiple blockchains are, are done on that network and using those resources. And then after those transactions are settled on the parachain, they are passed to the main blockchain to be committed to a block. So again, saving the resources or spreading the resources out to provide more scalable and speedier transactions. So that's how we sort of balance between security, scalability, and decentralization. Next, we'll look at how we build on the blockchain. So see you in the next one.